These names are so familiar to me, Vox said. This world yearns for a warrior of light. And blanks are to fulfill a prophecy to become Palamecia's hero. A blank would become the first warrior of light. However, an ancient Mughal was leading me to the home of the supposed Elder Warrior of Light. This way. Elder Warrior of Light? You may already be aware, but this world once boasted someone with the title of the Warrior of Light. Wait, what, uh, exactly do you mean by that? The prophecy said there hasn't been one yet, and that one is going to appear. It will all be clear soon. You will meet with a man who became a hero, and became the very source of that prophecy. He was the first warrior of light, and the name he bore was the same as your own. So he's my predecessor. Not in the way that you mean it. Let me instead call him Palamecia's Point of Origin. You mean a god? No. It appears I have completely confused you. He's Vox? Vox plays a role necessary for Palamecia's survival. Meaning what? Is that question rhetorical? I suppose it is at that. Welcome back to Mobius and Chapter 5. And as you can see, I was an idiot once again. I don't know why this cape is happening exclusively in this project. But at least this time I have the audio files and the cutscenes we had were just dialogue. So excuse me for giving you a blank screen then. We just were standing with our uh, with between the two characters discussing something. First, a little um, asking for advice from Echo. Hey, Echo, uh, where do you think we're going? Hmm, don't know. This uh, first warrior of light. You think he's gonna lecture me? You aren't prepared, and you will have to work harder. I wish I could help, but I can't. You sound like you're scared. No, it's just... He wants to talk to you, not me. What... What if I butt in and... And something terrible happens? That's true. You don't want to be responsible if things take a turn south. And they might. So then, why don't you lay low for a while, okay? I'll work everything out for myself. It'll be all right. You can trust me. Thanks. Then the Moogle telling us that uh, there were other blanks or other people who came here to talk to his master before. It has been many, many years since I have guided an aspirant like yourself. Who else was there? Other blanks, as eager as you are. I mean, what did they look like? Perhaps this comes as a surprise to you, but Mughals are wholly unable to distinguish one human being's face from another's. Still, each one of you gives off a different light, and that's how we can tell which one of you is whom. So Mog and Moog too? Yes. The same is true for all Moogles, without exception. That's a bit odd. I thought that all Moogles shared a consciousness. Not all desire to do so. That's why I chose to sever my pom-pom from the collective. The pom-pom is merely a symbol, to be sure. 
and our real communication takes place within our hearts. So perhaps I'm not a Moogle, because I lack a Moogle's heart. And the third mentions that none of those who came here before have managed to become Warrior of Light. Do you have any questions for me? Hmm. What happened to the blanks who came before me? I do not know what happened after they departed, but they did not become Warriors of Light. They may have been moments from defeating Chaos. But that is too monumental of a task for a blank. And that's where we are right now. mentioned to me that killing Chaos would be quite a difficult task, right? Difficult, yes. But not impossible. So it's been done before. If that's the case, why is he still running rampant here? Because he is part of Palamecia itself. As long as the world continues to exist, Chaos will return again. The person you are going to meet now has bested Chaos countless times. The Warrior of Light. He is no longer a Warrior of Light. Though the two of you shared a name, he now goes by Sid. Sid was once known as the Warrior of Light. Sid. Every Final Fantasy needs a Sid. Here we reach the Hall of Light. Where we will find Sid, I think. Big empty plane. You have passed the tests laid out before you. My master eagerly waits for your head. And there he sits all alone. What is it that you want from me? <sighs> Quite into prying, aren't you? Huh? Yet it is evident enough that I am but an old man whose time in this lonely world is short. <laughs> is that supposed to intimidate me or something? 
I have something of import that I wish to show you. Let us talk along the way. Okay, let's see how well we do with a Dark Knight with a Buster Blade. Buster Sword. Cutscene before the battle? That would be rather interesting. Of course, please. What about it? It is this world's first tale. As the runes guided you once, they will do so yet again. This is my gift to he who seeks to become the warrior of light. Stronger before. Say goodbye. The spell is pretty good, but the... Um... Even the scent of the wind feels like home, but I suppose many feel the same about their youth. It just smells like mold to me. Every man has a unique past that no one else can fully appreciate. Your familiar smells would be foreign to me as well. Your skull's thicker than syrup, you know. What's all this about? Sarah, of course. She's... She's completely smitten with you, and for some reason you can't see it. You're the one who's thick, Mid. Most people wouldn't share something so embarrassing. When something is far in the past, it stops being embarrassing and becomes a bittersweet memory you keep locked away. That feeling grows stronger with age. Even the most painful of experiences blooms like a beautiful rose. It's completely hopeless. We have no choice but to leave the fields fallow. Don't lose heart, Mid. The reservoir should be enough for this season. Yeah, you're right. I'll go ask when the Lord will open it. You looked like me. And you had a first name in common. This is your memory? Yes. Although you may have looked like me, I assure you you are not. You never mentioned having a younger brother, but even if you did, I suppose you wouldn't remember. 
sounds mundane enough so far. Fire spell has far too high a cooldown. We will have to switch that one out, probably. These memories are yours, right? Because I've lost mine and can't prove it one way or the other. I am a man of honor. I would not lie to one whom I teach. This tale is mine, and mine alone. I desire nothing but to show you where the warrior of Light Tail began, and will let you do with it what you will. Hey! Hmm? Hello. This is Sarah. She's the only daughter of Shea Cornelia's proprietor. And she's got some news for us. Yesterday, Lord Chaos came to me and asked... Asked me to marry him. As you know, Lord Chaos... Controls the reservoir between the city and here. He told me that... He will not let water flow to the village until I make a promise to be his wife. Wait. He will not open the gates until you assent to his proposal? Even though the village will dry up? <laughs> I would be chomping at the bit if I were you. He's rich and has power. That would be more than enough for me. Water, power, riches. <sighs> Marriage is not about wealth or politics, but about spending your life with someone special. At least, it is to me. Material comfort is but a secondary concern. How can I give my heart to one who would rob a village of life-giving water if I do not acquiesce? Don't worry about that. Everyone would understand that you cannot do something that you feel is wrong. We'll figure something out. Thank you. Hearing you say it above all others warms my heart. <laughs> I see where you're going with this, Sarah. Meaning what? Why are you always so pig-headed? These names are so familiar to me. Because this is the tale of where it all began. Come, we have much more to see and experience. Honestly, back then I didn't know what I should think about the story, especially since originally chapter 5 was a huge thing with lots of filler space, at least that's what it felt like at the time. And I wanted to change out the, the fire spell. Yeah. 
When you told me that you were the first warrior of light, I expected a hero. But, uh, you were just a nobody. I was a no-name country boy from a nondescript village. My talents with a blade were better than average, perhaps. But never had I left my homeland and traveled the world. Everyone else was a nobody too. Sarah. Chaos. We were all ordinary people, living ordinary lives. Never had I pictured myself being an adventurer. Let's just say, it wasn't exactly on my list of things to do. <laughs> but it should be interesting to see where the story leads, right? If nothing else? Demon Wolves. Interesting thing about being a protagonist, the hands of fate can be turned by others against your will. Something or someone was working against me, and the whole time I had been none the wiser. Uh, I don't need you to spell out for me who the Warrior of Light's enemy was. Chaos, you are mistaken. I have always pledged to be your wife. I pine after no other but you. No, you misunderstand. He has no feelings for me. I did go see him, but the two of us merely talked. I swear to you. That's chaos. He doesn't look all that tough for someone supposedly terrorizing the countryside. I expected someone worthy of the name, but I guess not. Chaos used to be a human being, just like you or me. It was a bit later when things started to get more complicated. He was stripped of all vestiges of individuality and compassion, and became the entity you know him as today. An agent of destruction, and a wanton monster whose enmity and hatred know no bounds. I don't think I get it. How was he stripped of individuality? Is such a thing even possible? Perhaps I have gotten ahead of myself. It will be but a little while before all is made clear. He always says that, but it continues on and on and on. That's what I felt back then. And I didn't think his story explained anything. Not really, at least. Same skin as him. I believe I mentioned this before, but most painful memories have a distinct beauty when viewed from a far enough distance. 
it most is. but not all some remain fresh no matter how many times they have been bandaged wounds best left alone if they're too painful to remember then why not just forget them because they are lessons for others to learn from lessons that can help you turn despair into hope I made a pact to never turn my back on the abject despair that I myself once felt. Come one, come all, and listen well to my words. I hereby announce the first Palamecian Grand Tournament. I bid all who feel up to the challenge to test their mettle. Yet be warned that in all tests of strength, injury, and perhaps death, are a persistent threat. You there, do you quiver in anticipation or in fear? Then allow me to sweeten the pot. The man who emerges the victor will win the glorious prize of having one of their most dear wishes granted on the spot. Ah, but perhaps you do not believe. <laughs> Fear not. The patron of the Grand Tournament is none other than Lord Chaos, a man who wishes for your success. Yet do not think that Lord Chaos will dictate the rules of engagement to exert power over those less fortunate than he. For you, dearest citizens, have the authority to choose them yourselves. They will be called the Laws of Palamecia. That's Vox, but he seems more normal. Ah, uh, he used to be a mere human as well. And then became what he is today. I remember that the prophecy had a tournament. The Warrior of Light supposedly would win a victory by default, not in combat. That is true. Another one of my so-called exploits that came to become part of the prophecy. As you can see, my tale is tied inevitably to it. <sighs> Chaos is entering the competition too. Do you think uh, he'll marry Sarah if he wins? Maybe. He seems confident. But, uh, there's no way he can. I mean, not if you're there, right? And you will be. Y you signed me up? I, I had to! Who else can win and get Chaos to open up the Sluice Gates? Come on! You're our best swordsman! You owe it to everyone here! <sighs> so, this was the first tournament. And you managed to eke out a victory without harming anyone, right? That makes sense. Does it? I would ask you not to assume, but to see the truth with your own two eyes. Why do I have to see it for myself when you're here to tell me exactly what happened? Because what's important isn't the end result. It's what you learn on the way there. How you've grown and matured in the process, and how you interpret the two. Even though I never intended to leave my village behind and set out on a life-altering adventure, I was forced to by things beyond my control, and my fate was decided on the battlefield rather than the rice field. So you didn't like fighting? 
I resented the unfairness of reality and complained every last step of the way. I want to show you everything that I saw, heard, and felt in my journey. If you learn why my path was the way that it was, you might find clues on how to overcome the forces that seek to shape your life, particularly when you are faced with choices that may end in anger. That is my gift to you. So I'm supposed to learn from you and live in exactly the same way? No. I ask that you pay close attention to what I show you. Take whatever kernels of wisdom that you may, and use them so that you do not end up a lonely old man. The Warrior of Light's long journey began in a tiny, nondescript village. A village that had long been terrorized by its ruler, Chaos. I should have spent my life there as a simple farmer. Yet the threads of fate bound me endlessly to the sword. I was forced to bear arms against the evil that threatened us. I fell prey to abject despair, and the path before me was laden with thorns. Yet from this despair I rose, bringing hope to this world as the warrior of light. And in so doing, I forever changed the order of this world. From this very disorder, Palamecia's insatiable desire to be regaled with tales of hope was born. For example, a tale of an ordinary young man rising up against evil, vanquishing it to restore peace to a long-suffering world. People wish not to think. They wish to be comforted. Yes, my tale can teach you much about the true nature of Palamecia how it came to be, and why it is how it is. But some tales must be experienced, not told. And this tale will reveal the origin of the Warrior of Light. Ooh, that blight eye. Hmm. Now then, where were we in the telling? Some tedious goings-on in your hometown, as I recall. You don't mince words. As you say, it was petty rivalry that first set things into motion. But it was a certain event that sent this backcountry youth down the path toward my future. The path toward becoming a warrior of light. From everything I've heard so far, it's hard to imagine how. Delve into my past and you'll see. Then let's see. Echoes of Attorney. Yeah, store. Now let's begin. So this is the clash with chaos at the competition, huh? Things are coming to a head now. I know. A mere backwater brawl. That is what you're thinking, is it not? I still can't picture you rising from this to become the Warrior of Light. A backwater this may have been, but I was up against the best of the best in the competition. I did not think I stood a chance. Oh, weren't you the best sword in town? Perhaps yes, but stronger rivals had come from afar, seeking wealth and glory. Chaos and the purse he offered tempted the best blades from across the land. Of course, he wanted you to lose. It wasn't quite as simple as that. This was all part of a carefully laid plan. 
But perhaps you should see for yourself. Feel the heat upon your skin as you enter the arena. With your hands, wield your steel, and with your eyes, try to penetrate Chaos's rooms. So this is what you meant by experiencing your past firsthand. I am somewhat surprised they seem to have taken out the this chapter special gimmick. In the original chapter 5 you had in almost every fight a situation where the power of certain elements either went up or down and that changed every turn or so. through that first battle my opponent didn't even seem willing to fight I landed blows of course but nothing more than a scratch no it's clear they threw the match something's not right here correct chaos fixed the fight the question now is can you see through the subterfuge to the scheme that lies below Hmm. Chaos wanted him to win. You're through the third round. I've barely even crossed swords. The crowd looks a little unsettled. Mid, find out what's going on. You bet. I'm on it. I charged recklessly in, time and time again, yet their blows always seemed to glance aside. The crowd began to suspect foul play. Of course they were suspicious. Your opponents were holding back. But why? You'll see soon enough. Now, on to the next room. Why is this note called Heights of Grief? What happened? Such a shame. May he find peace and eternal rest. Why did this happen? Why'd Mid have to die? He was too smart for his own good. 
your brother got too close to the truth. Truth? <gasps> Are you mad? You'll get me killed too. I'll kill you myself. <clears throat> His brother Mid died. Heights of confusion. was nothing but a pretense. Lord Chaos will cut you down while the crowd looks on in gleeful astonishment. You see, each opponent you face thus far was deep in Lord Chaos's pocket. I don't understand. Why plan all this just to kill me? Don't tell me cutting off the water supply was part of this too. He could have had one of his lackeys kill me off at any point. He wishes to end this fair and square, in front of a particular audience, you see. I don't get it. It makes no sense. Let me rephrase that, then. It's not the crowd he wishes to impress with your death, but an audience of one. You will die in front of Sarah. Sarah? Sarah is quite smitten with you. To Lord Chaos. That makes you a very unwanted rival in love. Sarah has feelings for me? But even if that's true... Tell me one thing, please. Why did Mid have to die? Your brother realized what was happening. He could see that all your opponents were holding back. You couldn't lose. They were letting you win. So that Chaos could face me in the final battle, so he could end me himself. Why kill Mid when things were going their way? It makes no sense. So that the ruse would not be discovered. You would claw your way up to the final battle through sheer skill. But Lord Chaos would prove stronger still. That is what the story had to be. If word of the throne matches got out, Lord Chaos's honor would be disparaged. His honor? I would imagine that Lord Chaos ordered that Mid be silenced. Over something so petty has he no regard for a man's life? Has he no respect for anything at all? Who does he think he is? You tell him. You tell Chaos. He'll get his audience, but they'll be seeing him at the end of my sword. That makes no sense to me here, this, this point, because the, we already heard the crowd already suspected foul play in the in the preliminaries, so how how was he protected from that from these rumors when that is already there? Even without our influence. You ready for this? Here we go. Say goodbye. 
Then came the final match. My rage toward chaos had grown venomous and dark. So that's when you became the Warrior of Light, when you defeated Chaos in the final battle. No, it was not. At the time, my hatred for him hung too heavily upon my heart. A Warrior of Light must bring hope, but I, I brought nothing but despair and a terrible thirst for vengeance. Please forgive me. I must ask you go alone once more. Yeah, planning on it. Be wary of those under Chaos's sway. Beware his shadow. Ability weakening. Ah, of course, the, the Shadow Warriors. You ready for this? I believe I mentioned it briefly before you need to be careful when you face the same type of shadow of a, the shadow that has the same type of drop that you have that is nasty I had luck. They didn't use the ability weakening skills. Preparations. Hey, hey, you're in pretty bad shape. I'm ready. I'm ready to fight. You didn't look like it. that Lord Chaos suffered in the last bout were more grievous than first thought. He will bow out of the final. And so, that makes you the victor. We have a winner! <laughs> what wounds? He suffered nothing. Tell him. Coming for me. Hey. 
are you now? Hmm. Are you sure that's wise? Sarah's wishes. What's that supposed to mean? Poor, sweet Sarah went crying to Lord Chaos. She said she'd do whatever he wanted, so long as he pulled out of the final bout. It seemed she could not bear to see you kill. And those worthless idiots left you looking like something the cat dragged in. Hardly the right note to strike for our grand finale. Lord Chaos only stands to lose face tormenting such a pitiful opponent. Wouldn't you agree? <sighs> and you, you have the lovely Sarah and those simpering lackeys to thank for letting you escape with your life. If you have a message for her, anything at all, I'd be more than happy to pass it along in your stead. No need. It's nothing to do with me. So cold. That was a rather ridiculous end, but now we know we have a prophecy of it um, that he wins untouched comes, huh? First everyone else through the match and the, fi the final battle, this opponent bows out. Sarah, after all that, had agreed to marry Chaos. I understand why she did this. It was to save me. But the untimely death of my brother remained unresolved. Ironically, I heard that turn of events caused Chaos no small amount of grief as well. Chaos? What cause could he have for grief? He instigated all this. Don't tell me he had regrets. His reputation was in tatters. He had announced the competition with great fanfare, in the hopes of achieving a glorious victory over me. But it was all of it left unfinished. Soon enough, the rumors began to spread. On everyone's lips was word that Sarah's love was not Lord Chaos at all. Her true love was for another, the town's top swordsman. Chaos had conceived of his competition in jealousy, they said. And when he attempted to slay the swordsman through underhanded means, his scheme fell into pieces. Which is true. Yes, it seems that someone who knew what had happened let slip the truth. People were laughing behind Chaos's back, which actually served to safeguard me, after a fashion. Right, of course. If anything happened to you, everyone would think Chaos was behind it. He tied his own hands. The townspeople, Chaos's own subjects, ridiculed him for his failure. And in time, he came to hate them for it. All of them. Who was it who told the people about that? My guess is voice, meaning vox. Yeah, we're never.
which leaves the question why you know Oh, my. But my throat is parched. It appears Lord Chaos has no intention of restoring your water supply. The crops wither in the field, and the livestock suffer. What does taking our water away achieve? If this continues, every living thing in the village will wither and die. Revenge for what happened at the competition, no doubt. It did not exactly cast him in the best of life. So now, he's making the entire village pay for it. The fool. He's mad. He's not as stupid as he is vindictive, mind you. And lately, he's been faced with a particular problem. He is enthralled to a fiend. A vicious, unrelenting fiend. A fiend? Yes. Its name is love. Enough games. No doubt it causes Lady Sarah great distress. No matter how genuine her actions may be, Lord Chaos's suspicions only deepen. Perhaps you would be willing to help remedy this. You do owe her your life, after all. What can I do? Surely if I show up, it will only make Chaos angrier. Your will to assist in this endeavor will suffice. The rest can be left to fit. I wouldn't waste what little time remains in indecision. Lady Sarah is torn between her loyalty to the suffering villagers and her loyalty to Lord Chaos himself. I wonder how much more she can endure. What does he mean by that? That's right! Don't! This isn't your fault! There's no other way. <sighs> what are you doing here? No! Stay back! I've thought this through. I have no other choice. My... Sweet Sarah, I respect your determination, but before you do something irreversible, please tell us what brought you to this precipice, as it were. Indeed, I know a little of your dilemma, but I'm afraid you've left this young man here entirely in the dark. Or shall I shed some light on matters? <sighs> you pledged your hand in marriage to Lord Chaos. With all the sincerity you could muster, you pledged it. Oh, but he wanted your heart, as well as your hand. Sadly, I fear that mere words were not enough. <sighs> words are all that I had to express the truth in my heart. And yet, Lord Chaos would not believe me. Why? Why? The reason is obvious. You promise your love to Lord Chaos, but this emotion 
Love <laughs> is foreign to him. Then tell me, what am I to do? What other choice do I have? But this. There is one bold but brilliant way to resolve this conundrum. Tell me, if you were to name the villain in this tale, who would that be? <laughs> Why not just kill him? But I... Please help us! Without water, we'll all die! We'll follow chaos no longer! You're our only hope! If you make a stand, you can count on all of us to have your back! Chaos has stolen these people's water. And Sarah, who offered to marry him, now feels death to be her only option. We face despair at every turn. But among us here, there is one whose light can banish this shadow. And his name? I see now. Their hopes now lie with you. Notice how he plays the crowd. You've seen it before, I'm sure. When the hope that dwells within people's hearts turns to a warm and shining light. The light of hope. You saw the hope in their eyes turn toward you. And it gave you the push you needed. It was the first time that light revealed itself to me. I could not resist it. So warm it was. So gentle. It shone in through the holes, rent in my heart by the loss of my brother, and set my soul ablaze. Water is life, and that which takes life away is a mortal threat. Chaos became that threat. This common enemy brought the people together in a way they had not been before. They wanted someone to rise against Chaos, to end their despair. For better or for worse, they pinned their hopes on me. I was all they had. They had faith in me, far more perhaps than I deserved. I could see it in their eyes. Their need was undeniable. They needed hope, hope you gave to them. Just as the prophecy foretold, the warrior of light would bring hope to the world. Yes, a quarrel over water in a remote village. That was the origin of the prophecy. Now has come the time to witness the end of the first among tales. Chaos hoarded the water jealously, causing the people of the villages untold hardship. Why? They did nothing to earn his ire. Nothing except ridicule his cowardice. The more groundless the emotion, the stronger it grows. It is often so. Chaos's heart seethed with malice. A malice which in time spawned a great, fiendish evil upon the land. You mean Chaos was responsible for the fiends? 
Even our hearts are home to a boundless chaos. Each one of us harbors evil of a kind. Water was the symbol of chaos's authority, and the water reflected his malice and amplified it. Until water and chaos were as one. Fight Kraken. Fortune be with you. So did I face and defeat Chaos, and thereby restore the life-giving blessing of water to the people. And so, your tale ended. No. This was merely the beginning of my struggle. In the years that came, wicked creatures poured forth, wreaking havoc amongst the people. Perhaps it was vengeance, a curse sent vanquished lord. The people suffered great deprivations. In time, they gave a name to all such evil upon the land. They called it chaos. Wild beasts raiding the villages, foul abominations lurking neath graves, teeming hordes of demonic creatures and sorcerers most wicked. Dragons raining destruction down Chaos, they called them all. Chaos was to blame. I fought and defeated Chaos again and again in all manner of forms. Each time lifting the people from despair and giving them a gift, the gift of hope. Indeed, through my struggles, I became a knight and then a hero. And eventually, well, 
You know how the story goes from there. You became a warrior, the bearer of hope's light to all. You became the warrior of light. And what about Sarah? She taught me the joys of peace. She still does. This is my gift to you. It is all I have to give now. I thank you for listening to this old man's story of days long gone by. We must now part ways. Return to the path that beckons to you. Write your own tale to stand the test of time. One question I have remaining. Why did voice do all that? You say this story is a gift, but what exactly have you given me? Think of it as a guide for you to follow. A map for the one who would be my successor. You seem conflicted about the path that lies ahead of you. I was much the same in my day. I began not a warrior at all. I too had little desire to fight, as you yourself have seen. When I look back, it is as if I can see myself then, caught up in the madness of this world. But my struggles had their reward. A life of value. A life of this world needs hope. It needs it desperately. And it needs a hero to deliver that hope to the people when the light fails. But heroes? Ah, they are not born every day. We had to find a successor, even if it meant forging one from the rawest of material. We took the story of a man who brought that light of hope to the land. My story. And with it... You made that slipshod tale I had to live through. Slipshod? Uh, you are jaded and weary from the fight. You rejected the fiction we gave you, as well you should have. So I gave you the truth. I hoped it would move you to take up your sword again. All to get me to fight. I understand why you need someone to follow in your footsteps, but I'm not you. But you have it in you to become a champion of the people. You desire it, I know. Even now, your valor shines far more brightly than it did when you first set foot in this land of Valamisia. Forget that torturous tale. It's hardly worth the telling. Just do this old man one favor. Pick up your sword. Stand and fight. Is that too much to ask? What do you hope will come of this? I hope for hope itself. Hope for this world. Hard to fault that. Ah, at last you see the light. You know I won't be free until this is finished. Indeed. One question I have remaining. Why did Voice do what he did? It wasn't shown here, but Voice was the one who recommended the plan of a tournament to Chaos. So he orchestrated everything here. Why? There must have been a goal, a purpose behind it. And Sid himself seems like we were 
just a tool to be used. Is this truly the origin story of a, perhaps of a prophecy, but not of that struggle for hope? Who knows? Perhaps we will see later. Let's continue on. Just so I understand, the whole Warrior of Light prophecy was meant to find a replacement for Sid? To make a hero, someone to bring hope to the people. Your understanding is mostly correct. Did Sid create the prophecy? It is based on his adventure. This much is true. But he did not make the prophecy. It was Palamecia itself that did that. You're not serious. I assure you I'm quite serious. It was Palamecia itself that called out for a hero to bring hope to its people. Before he knew it, Sid found himself entirely at the mercy of this world. It wanted him to fight, to bring that light of hope to others, time and time again. So Sid abandoned his old name and gave up the fight. I could do the same myself. That gave Sid his freedom, yes. But the same would not work now, I am afraid. Palamecia is starved of hope. Turn your back on it, and it will bend the prophecy. Bend reality itself, to bring you back upon the path. So there's no escape. That actually might be an explanation. If Palamecia itself needs that hope, perhaps it bent reality back then as well to turn the boy into a hero. How much? Ah, oh, come on. It is up to you to face and defeat Chaos. I wish you good luck. So Sid leaves the fighting to me, while he watches on with Sarah? No. Sarah no longer inhabits this world. She died? She has left. She is no longer in Palamecia. My master sent her somewhere far, far away. Why? He could no longer fight. And without him, there was no one to bring hope to the people of Palamecia. To hold her here would have been to trap her in a world without hope. So he let her go. Many years, decades even, have passed since then. She still sends letters sometimes. I believe we have found a few of his letters in chapter 4. Sid was a boy like any other. It was the trials he faced that led him to become the first warrior of light. 
His many battles with chaos were the spark that kindled hope in this world. Or so it seems. <sighs> and now, it's my turn. Do I follow in the old man's footsteps? Become a warrior of light and fight chaos one last time? I can't say. Sid defeated chaos before, but it never left this place. It falls and is reborn. What's the point in fighting? Will defeating Chaos bring hope back to this world? Is that even enough? If Chaos will simply rise again... Well... Then what's the point of hope? Excellent questions. Maybe we will find out? And with this, chapter 5, the first warrior ended. Okay, but I end this episode here and next time we continue with chapter 6. Until then, I'm Maze and don't get lost. <laughs>